Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today for Texas Talks Art. My name is Ashley DeHoyas. I'm the curator at Diverse Works here in Houston, Texas. And I have the pleasure of speaking with Levy Olivia and Predica Rogeria. Um, here are Houston, two Houston artists that both have individual practices as well as uh, an amazing collaborative uh, body of work that they're just um, getting into. Um, uh, my pronouns are she, her, they, them. Uh, if, if you want to take a moment right now to update your name um, or your pronouns or drop your introductions in the chat, we'd love to hear who's out um, watching. Uh, I'm gonna briefly um, go over a little housekeeping and then we'll get started on our um, presentation. Um, so before uh, we'd like to just, you know, Texas Talks Art is an unprecedented multi-institution uh, initiative intended to introduce the works of artists across the uh, state of Texas to a wider audience. Uh, the talks um, take the form of a 30 minute uh, virtual lunchtime talk um, and features a series of 50 artists um, and arts collectives and conversations with 50 curators um, across the state. Um, we are super excited to be part of Texas Talks Art um, and you can find more information on their website. Uh, we'd like to um, quickly uh, say thank you to the Texas uh, Talks Art supporters. Uh, Deborah Dupree and Richard Rothberg, uh, the McGinnis Family Fund and Communities Foundations of Texas, and the Tatum Art Advisory. Um, and then also, where you're joining us, Texas, um, the next couple of Texas Art Talks um, all happen on Tuesdays. Uh, so we have the next three for April, uh, if you'd like to join in. Uh, our talk will be archived and streamed not only on the Diverse Works YouTube channel, but it also will be featured on the Texas Talks Art uh, website and YouTube. So please follow texastalksart.org for more information. Um, and okay, so uh, before we jump into uh, having our artists speak, I am gonna just give a brief land acknowledgement. So uh, we'd like to take a moment to res respectfully, oh, sorry, respectfully acknowledge the original inhabitants of the land in which we reside. To get, today we gather with you on the land currently called Houston, um, which lies in the ancestral territories of the Karankwa and the Atakapa Ishak Sana peoples. We recognize that the native people that share the Southeast Texas region, including the Tumakua, the Texas Coma Cruz, uh, and the Kula We acknowledge, uh, acknowledge this land as occupied unceded territory and pay tribute to them. For those of you who would like to do the same, please introduce yourself and make your land acknowledgement in the chat, or you can call out your ancestors who you'd like to bring into the space. Um, so quickly, I'm just gonna introduce Levy and Predica uh, to y'all. Uh, Levy and Predica, I've been have I've been working with over the last couple of months as part of our online exhibition at Diverse Works Visionary Futures. I'm super excited to share the work that they've been doing, not only individually, but has they have they, as they have come together um, as two dikes and a knife, uh, which you'll learn a little bit more from. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass it over to Levy and Predica. Hey y'all. I see a lot of cool people in the house. Hey Annette. Um, hey, Aaron, Antonius. There's a few names we're able to see for a minute. Um, so I am a visual artist. I've been a visual artist for as long as I can remember. Um, that visual art shows up in a multidisciplinary way. Um, I'm really interested in, in history, um, specifically African-American, Black women, queer history. Um, and so uh, I really... Um, use materials to have a lot of historical value, a lot of historical context. My paintings come across in the form of uh, a style called uh, seco fresco or freco, fresco seco. Um, and I also do sculptures and paintings and collages and installations and things like that. Um, so I'll just breeze through these images to kind of give you an idea of some of the work that I've done that I think has the same intention as our uh, dining and food gatherings have. And that's to uh, engage the public, to bring up issues about uh, uh, social inequities, um, cultural diversity, um, and queer and Black female awareness. So 
Um, next slide. Um, this is one of my paintings. Um, I put this painting here because I think that it has a lot of uh, evidence of of the sort of mining that I do. Um, so I do layers and layers and layers of these dyed plasters, these pigmented plasters for months. And then I um, come up with the theme to go with them. And so I paint the images, I dig through the material, I dig through the surface, I try to um, unearth uh, details that may be hidden behind the surface. Um, and you can kind of see the face of this person who's sort of been carved into, and then the scarf that this person's wearing is sort of mined and dug through and excavated. Um, next slide. Um, this is a show that took place in 2016 at Station Museum. It was called Friendly Fire. And for Friendly Fire, um, I wanted to talk about the location of the Station Museum and the importance of it being located in what is now the Museum District, but also Historical Third Ward. Um, and the, at this time, the Station Museum had been there for about 16 years. And what I wanted to do is to sort of uh, mine the history of the walls. Um, exploring the artists that had previously been there, trying to be triggered by things that were left under the surface of the walls. And so I dug through the walls and I dug in this, this statement, beautiful gentrification. Um, and if you stood back from a certain distance, all you saw was beautification. Um, if you go to the next slide, you can see a bit more detail of what that wall turned, up, turned out looking like. I took dremels and blades and carving tools and carving knives to sort of um, find things in this very archaeological way. I, I really, really love um, archaeology and this idea of digging and mining the past. Um, I believe that there's no looking into the future without first exploring the past. So a lot of my work has that um, context. Next slide. It's another image. Um, while I was working on that wall. Um, and this here is a project that I did for um, a small grant, uh, Let Creativity Happen from Houston Arts Alliance. Um, two of my favorite poets and writers are Audre Lorde and Pat Parker. Pat Parker happens to be from Sunnyside, Houston, Texas. And so I thought this was a great opportunity to um, talk about, to unearth, to elevate Pat Parker, but also in a way that I could um, marry my love for Audre Lorde. And it was this book um, that was released a few years ago called Sister Love, The Letters of Audre Lorde and Pat Parker. 1974 through 1989. Um, both of these women ended up dying from cancer um, through their struggles of cancer and um, recovery. They wrote letters to one another. And I thought it was an amazing way to sort of create this social intervention throughout the parks in Houston, McGregor Park, White Oak Park, uh, Emancipation Park. And I sort of put these love letters around um, so that people who were jogging or riding their bikes could see um, uh, or could be stopped or stomped or triggered by these statements that were out there. Um, and the, the, the installation was called, this is not a piece of paper, but my arm. Um, and it was part of a letter that Pat Parker wrote to Audre Lorde. Um, these are made from cement and plaster and put on poles and sort of staked around the neighborhoods. Next slide. Um, during the uprise of last summer and still today um, as George Foreman's murderer is on trial, I'm sorry, George Floyd's uh, murderer is on trial. It seems right now that George Floyd is on trial. So I like to like take a moment to uh, put some good some good energy out there and hope that these jurors do what they should do. Um, anyway, uh, Station Museum asked to ask a few artists to get involved with this mural project, and I have seen so many murals of George Floyd. Um, and I just wanted to sort of use a body that looked more like mine and a 
persona that was more like mine and sort of put some positivity out there and some hope about what could be um, after a pandemic, after an uprise, after a crazy summer. And so I sort of um, borrowed from Basquiat the term uh, bloom for real and changed it to bloom for real um, as like a hopeful gesture, as like a hopeful statement to say that there's some possibility the future hope is that we will end up planting boxes around the murals um, using ammunition boxes. And we're gonna grow food so the people in the neighborhood can actually have it for free. Um, yeah. And next slide. And then um, the wonderful Alicia Wormsley, who is an artist out of Pittsburgh, asked me to join herself and three other artists, Robert Hodge and Philip Pyle, to create these flags outside of Project Row Houses. Um, and her statement that has been around, I remember her like pinning this statement about 12 years ago, there are black people in the future. Um, and over the last 10 years, I've seen it evolve and sort of become this, this, um, war, this war cry. Um, so very happy to be involved with this. These flags are still up right now. And uh, I think that's all to say. Oh, uh, Alicia has been featured in a lot of different programs lately, including um, Black Future, which is this is amazing book if no one has it yet. Uh, Kimberly Drew and uh, Jenna Wortham amazing book and you can kind of see the little statement right there uh, and this was the original piece that she put up in Pittsburgh um yeah so that's some of my social work and next is crazy guy <laughs> hey everybody um I wanted to talk about my my work is uh, really rooted in my own personal experience and narrative. Uh, growing up as and oh, we're like totally switching gears. I hope that's okay. <laughs> um, as an immigrant, uh, a young immigrant to this country, and kind of growing up in the in the eighties and nineties in like suburban Houston and what that looked like and what my experience was like uh, navigating um, a, an Indian cultural, very kind of like stricter traditional space versus like trying to be like all the cool white kids in my class and just through what I was able to see. Um, there, I don't remember any kind of repre uh, representation during that time. And anyways, I, and I mean that in like media, um, luckily, I had Bollywood to escape to, but that is a whole nother set of loaded issues. But uh, basically, I just wanted to open up and say that the work comes from that lens, and that's my that's the lens that I have. Um, next slide, Ashley. I'm gonna start with um, the most recent work that I've been making since COVID started uh, last March. Um, I started, I became really interested in uh, preservation of myself and my work and um, basically it, it came from kind of a, a, a sad, dark place of, well, I'm still going to work and I could get COVID and I could die, uh, you know, so that truly was my perspective um, and and in order to kind of get out of that mindset, I was thinking about how I can preserve images of myself, my stories, my uh, thoughts and feelings and whatever. Um, but this is a piece, I started making paintings on yoga mats using the material that I've used in the past uh, with my work, which is uh, saris and fabrics, uh, pieces of clothing from the women in my life, um, which has expanded more to the Houston, the Desi community in Houston. Um, and so this is a piece called Spread the Light Be the Lighthouse. Uh, there are conglomerations of images and selfies and um, kind of blur reality and fantasy. Um, and they're all on yoga mats. So next slide. This one is called Beautiful, Bountiful, Blissful. 
Uh, the titles for these pieces all come from uh, the tea bags. I call them like the little fortunes mm -hmm. on tea bags um, that are typically like off of yogi tea and things like that. And I find them to be, uh, I find it to be very uh, comedic. There's, for me, there's a lot of uh, kind of layered comedy in the work. Um, so that keeps me interested in my in the works that I'm making. Um, also the, the yoga mats became a site for me to, uh, well, to, to, to bring in queerness more uh, at the top layer, because I don't, I don't think I, I don't think I've been able to, I'm interested in so many things. So I have a hard time like trying to put all those things in one thing, <laughs> if that makes sense any sense but the yoga mats I really get to incorporate the layers that I want to talk about uh, whether that's immigration whether that's queerness whether that's uh, visibility um uh etc cetera, etc cetera. uh go ahead and go to the next slide please this is a performance from 2019 that I did in um at women in their work in Austin uh where the uh audience, we, we gathered about 85, 90 yoga mats and um, I was mic'd up and then basically I was buried alive, uh, so to speak, by the participants, by the audience that was at the uh, performance. And um, yoga mat is a European invention from the late 80s, early 90s. So it's not even really, in, uh, uh, it's not root it's not from you know the practice where it originates so I just let that work kind of speak for itself at the end I um, emerge from the mats um, and I'm excited to uh, do this work again it's it's an impactful performance especially because you can hear the breathing and how that's affected by the weight of the of the mats next slide uh, this was another piece in that same show called Indian Style. It's a uh, there's two pieces here. Indian Style is on the left, and uh, Posers is on the right. I forgot to caption that. Um, what I did was I started getting a lot of Instagram ads about yoga and stuff on my phone. I started collecting them, and then I basically uh, erased the body that was present in the ad. Um, out of 250 or so ads, I found three people of color. Um, there, it's uh, needless to say that all of it was white, white people, white bodies, white skinny bodies, white able bodies being shown. Um, it was one, it was three uh, uh, black people being shown and then one, um, one light skinned Indian woman. <laughs> uh, anyways, that, that's just really interesting to me. Um, it's something I'm very interested in uh, kind of reclaiming and, and decolonizing uh, what yoga has become and, and the spaces in which it's allowed to exist and how to create safe space for it, how to, um, how to pay homage and appreciation for the roots of where it comes from as opposed to kind of where it appropriation has taken it. Um, posers the in the bottom right corner is a jar of all the bodies that came from the cuttings of the piece. Um, it's also, I should mention, the top right shows, uh, you could see through the bodies, some of them, and see there was a Bollywood clip in the background and there's like disco lights going on, but it's one of my favorite, uh, Bollywood movies Kal Honaho and the song that's on loop there is called It's the Time to Disco. And I found it, um, Lovey recently watched this movie. Uh, I find it really funny because it's like the flip of the coin. It's like Indian people doing disco. It felt, felt like kind of a flip of appropriation. Like what would it look like if uh, South Asian or Indian people took disco and like took off with it like uh the west has done with yoga anyways it's just like how my brain works uh, i think one more slide or that could be it oh yeah now we're talking about food mm -hmm. <laughs> so 
Um, two Dykes and a Knife came from a shared interest in food and we uh, started dating long distance a few years ago and Lovey would send me uh, pictures of the stuff. We would like exchange what we were eating and stuff because we're nerds like that. We watch a lot of Food Network. It's a huge part of our relationship and friendship. And um, I, I just remember being like, wow, these are really pretty uh, plates. And do you have an Instagram account? And we should start one just because I don't want my own personal Instagram filled with food all of a sudden, but these are beautiful. And I wanted them to be shared as two, as like a black and brown queer couple doing food. I thought it was important that we get these beautiful images of food out there. That's kind of how it started in 2017. And in 2019, um, Frida decided that uh, we should come up with a name for this page that we were keeping this. Was it 2019? No, no 2017 yeah, when we did when it. Started. That's when the page started. Yeah, and we were like juggling around and like trying to come up with these names. And, it started uh, off as vegetarians because we're vegetarian and the other part is self-explanatory. But two decks, but Instagram refused to let us use vegetarians as a handle. I don't know why. I'm still mad about it. But two dikes and a knife came out of that uh, interest and uh, kind of taking back the word dyke and the negative connotations it used to have and it might still have and and the knife kind of gives us some edge. Oh, edge. We thought that it was catchy. Um, and, and we started off with the intention. We kind of started gaining traction on this. Um, this concept or this, yeah. uh, as we started to talk, yeah, these are just going to cl be clips from our latest event. Um, the, the, uh, the goal was to have dinners, curated dinners of small groups of people that would be left with prompts each time we bring out a course. So multi-course vegetarian kind of elevating what vegetarian meant. And, um, and, and then, conversation and exchange and hopefully a bridging instead of a dividing would happen between the guests at the dinner. That was the intention. COVID happened and kind of ruined some plans and the works or postponed them. And we were able to, Ashley kind of uh, approached, approached us with doing, visionary yeah, for visionary futures. Um, so Ashley approached us about visionary futures and the, these images that you're seeing, we should say happened about two weeks ago um, in our backyard. Um, we had, we took a, a trip this summer to sort of discover spices and food as we drove west. Um, and after we returned, we needed a place to unpack. So uh, Ashley came about at just the right time asking us about this project. We love the title, Visionary Futures. I am totally uh, into uh, Afro and Indo-futurism and how we see ourselves in the future. Um, and because history is such a big part of my work, I, I uh, delve into these Pre, these chefs that existed before me, these ideas that existed before me, uh, paying homage to Judy Chicago, uh, paying homage to Conflict Kitchen, uh, the Astor Gates suppers that he mm -hmm. would give every summer. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was just a very interesting way to consider culinary arts as a contemporary art form and a way mm -hmm. that we could use another medium um, this medium of cooking and culinary fusion is a way that Prithika and I um, collaborate because we don't really collaborate in our own practices. Mm -hmm. But the futurism part was really important and I understand that there's no way to really look into the future without first mining the past. And so a lot of the food that we did for this particular um, gathering was based in like our own. our own experiences like soul food, my dad's recipes, um, mm -hmm. Prithika's mom's recipes, just like sort of using spices and familiar flavors to get people talking, to create a dialogue um, amongst the, I guess, the audience, the Actually, are the, is the, are the images um, like fully viewable or? Sorry, I think a lot of it's getting cut off. Yeah, that's my fault. Hold, hold on. No hold worries. On. Um, the next few dishes, or the next few dishes, the next few images are some a couple of the um, meals that we served. 
at the dinner. So we can kind of go through those quickly. And since it's your lunch break, hopefully you get to eat after this. <laughs> yeah, so we knew that there was no real access to the outdoor world. And we think that right. this visionary futures came at a good time where people were starting to get vaccinated, where people were starting to understand wearing masks, where people were starting to understand being six feet apart. So out yeah. of 30 people, we chose six folks uh -huh. randomly uh -huh. um, out of a drawing. And uh, it ended up with these six amazing people who were all strangers that didn't know one another. Um, and at the end of it, I, I feel like there was this, this friendliness, this connection, yeah. this thing that, that seemed like a possible future, a possible outcome. Um, yeah. And yeah, we just love making beautiful food. That's like the, the, the aesthetic practice of it. Yeah. But then exploring these spices and these different flavors that many of us are familiar with. Um, it made it, thanks. <laughs> it, it just made it so much more fun. And we are so thankful for this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Um, for, from, we look forward to carrying it works. future too. Um, this is our second dinner, but it's our favorite. <laughs> it's yeah. our second dinner in an art space. Um, even though this is our backyard, I still feel like because it's our, it's our space, it is de definitely um, gallery-like. And, yeah, and but it was working. nice to be able to have it outside where each person got their own table and yeah. was able to be comfortable um, in, in what today looks like. So yeah. I think we're right. We can take questions now, Ashley. I know we're like close. <laughs> Uh, hey everybody, sorry about that with the, the visuals. Um, it's okay, totally fine. I <laughs> so, think you're hungry enough. Yeah, <laughs> it's just rude to leave it up there longer. Yeah, um, so yeah, so if there are any questions in the audience, and it looks like there's one that just came up um, from Catherine Martin that was asking what your favorite Bollywood movie is. Ooh. Oh, um, as a child of the... 90s. Shah Rukh Khan <laughs> is my forever long crush. obsession. Um, crush. So I really like K3G, DDLJ, Go Ho no Ho. I know these are all abbreviations, but if y'all want to just DM me later, I'll like spell that out for you. Every one of them, they're amazing. They all like, you start off at DDLJ, you then go to K3G, oh, Kuch Kuch Hotai, then K3G, then Ho no Ho, and you kind of follow his trajectory with all the same actresses. And they all like, I don't know, it's a beautiful thing. Bollywood has a shit ton of other problems all of which I like to also play with the dressing, yeah. but the truth is the nostalgia with it for me, it like brings me to tears every single time to see Shah Rukh Khan die on the screen. And, like, and um, it's okay. <laughs> the spirit is there. It's the same kind of attitude. <laughs> so in terms of uh, the, the work that y'all are doing and that y'all have been doing, I mean, a lot of it is about sustainability and kind of, creating and thinking about innovation, not only food and visual art. Uh, where do y'all see yourself going in the future as y'all are continuing to work together, but then also individually? Pritika would like for us to have a restaurant. Oh my God. And I'm really like, good. hell no, I'm an artist. Like there is nothing else more important to me. Um, food probably runs a close second, but I, the idea of maybe, um, I like, I like, I like, I like uh, moments as, as collective pieces of art. And so I really am interested in the possibility of, for lack of a better term, supper club, like these gatherings that could be recorded, packaged and turned into um, these experiences that people sort of talk about. And along with those experiences, because, you know, I think experiences trigger change. And so if we have those experiences and we have these conversations and, and we have these conversations where people are neutralized because of the dining table, then I think that that gets, it fulfills me more than people coming to my restaurant and me throwing knives and spoons at people because, you know, we're overbooked or things like that. I like the idea of cur curing. <laughs> the would be overbooked, y'all. <laughs> I like the idea of curating, but I also love the idea of like where vegetarianism can go. 
Yeah. Um, and and that's something we didn't really uh, talk about. Well, there's nothing much to say yeah. except for the fact that like I grew up vegetarian before it was like so trendy and health oriented or, you know, the whole vegan stuff lately really like, mm. um, anyways, I just think that there's so much room and so much, uh, there's so much opportunity and food unexplored there too. So it's really interesting for us, um, to explore things that we want to eat and see. So we just cook it for ourselves because like the restaurants, especially here in Houston are lacking in like good vegetarian fare. That's, you know, not like roasted vegetables or a salad. Like no one wants to eat that. And I'm far away from like, you know, Southern Texas, Louisiana. My Mm -hmm. dad was a chef in my house. Mm -hmm. Um, So challenging gender roles as well. And Mm -hmm. also reminding people that, you know, vegetables are kind you know, plant-based is kind of the future. not necessarily not, not necessarily veganism for us, but mm-hmm. vegetarianism for sure. Um, mushrooms are definitely the future in so many capacities. Mm-hmm. Um, and so every meal you're going to get at least five different mushrooms. You're going to um, explore and 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 kind of change your palate about mm-hmm. around mushrooms. Mm-hmm. Um, so these are some some of our intentions. So there's two, just thinking about time and our 30 minutes is kind of almost up. Um, there's two questions that I want to just address and I'll address them. One's from uh, Virginia uh, in the chat who is asking if y'all ever think about sound checks to your meals, what sounds would pair best with the gorgeous mm-hmm. meals that you're presenting? And the other question is um, in the Q&A, which were people are interested in learn- knowing what kind of conversations or topics you address through your meals and the courses that you're providing. So it's kind of the experience. Um, I'll go to the second question first. Um, Some of the questions that we pose to our uh, participants at the dinners involve, uh, uh, typically we start with how how far Mm -hmm. do you travel Mm -hmm. to get to food, to to like get to your uh, grocery store? you know? Um, So we're immediately like talking about food deserts and food access. Um, And then another question might be something along the lines of memory and uh, what is your first food memory? And uh, because uh, food holds such a, because of the smell, because of taste, sometimes unknown, uh, you can't even name it, but you're like, oh, this reminds me of things. And talking about memory, really brings people together. Again, these are people that typically don't know each other. We know them, but they don't know each other. So it's a quick way for people to yeah. And this idea of connect. memory sort of takes us back to before we were tainted by the adult world. Like if we mm-hmm. can go back to our childhood memories about food, then it cuts out all the shit that we've sort of been uh, pressed with and, and that has changed our ideas yeah. about each other. Right, um, right. When you can neutralize it and go back to youth, it sort of takes out all the crap. Yeah. Um, and so memory is very important. We believe that food is memory, spice is memory, specifically for people of color. Mm-hmm. Um, texture is memory. Um, and so with memory, you can do so much more than, uh, you can do so much imagining. Um, the sound, uh, good question, Virginia. We have, we have wanted to, Uh, incorporate kind of all five senses into our sensory experience that would be the dinners uh, or the dining experiences we just haven't gotten there yet Um, I I I think that it would be nice to change the the sounds and I've I've also considered like working with like an experimental sound artist like how can we bring in other artists to to kind of get in on this like wouldn't it be cool to have like a live setup too, uh, to kind of play in the background? <laughs> collard green dust is um, dehydrated collard green leaves. We dehydrate them for about six hours at like 150 degrees. And then they are pounded and ground in a coffee grinder and salt and just a touch of sugar is added. And it's just an amazing uh, seasoning. For, for soul food specifically. In this in this uh, dinner, we sprinkled it on sweet potatoes. Yeah. Like a sweet potato mousse. Yeah. Well, thank y'all. 
Yeah, it looks like um, there is a question in the chat uh, that's specifically for Levy, um, but we are running out of time. Um, about the love letters. Uh, let me get closer. Okay. Uh, but Maya's going to drop in uh, Levy and Pratika's, or, sorry, Pratika's um, Instagram information so if you, and website. So if you want to follow up and, and reach out to them individually, you have that opportunity. Um, but thank you all so much for your time. Uh, please keep a lookout for uh, Equitable, uh, the film, um, April 10th and 11th will be yeah. streaming the behind the work that we recorded um, on March 21st uh, as part of Visionary Futures. And that'll show up on uh, a, um, that'll show up on our YouTube channel. And then I quickly also just reminded um, through the Texas Art Talks, there is one question, um, what Texas artists are you looking at? Or like what other mm -hmm. Texas individuals, uh, museums or whatnot are you interested in? I love um, Jennifer Ling Dachuk's work. She's in San Antonio. Um, I really love how interdisciplinary she is and how she uses materials coming from that same kind of like cross-cultural lens. Um, so personally, for me, I really look, look up to how, how she gets her concepts through and the different uh, types of materials she chooses to go there with. Um, for me, Deborah Roberts, that's, that's my girl. Um, just, I don't know, another, a more prolific artist right now in Texas. Um, Vicki Meek is my mentor, like my, my play mom, um, all that. And yeah, I think for both of us, we love what Jose Villalobos is doing right now. Um, just yeah, outstanding, incredible. emotionally moving work. Their work mm -hmm. is amazing. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again. Thank you, Texas Art Talks, um, for allowing us to come together and talk with Levy and Pritika uh, about their work. Um, again, you can find more information about Equitable at diverseworks.org, or you can visit levyolivia.com or kirajgaria.com to learn more information about their individual practices. Thank I you. I wish we had more time. Sorry. I know. <laughs> we could, like, talk about this stuff forever. Thank you all so much. Thank you all so much.